Hi, everybody, and welcome back to our Virtual Connect series. We're continuing this one with a repeat performance from last year on a state of the association, giving you a peek behind the curtain from our board leaders to let you know what our leadership is doing and how the organization is progressing through these challenging times, but also times of opportunity. Uh, you'll hear more about the innovative approaches we've been taking over the past year and what we have planned for the rest of the year. And best of all, you've got a great team to do it. Our officers are on board with us today. Um, I think it's still close enough to say that they are all stars. Um, even though the event is over, they continue to do good work for you every single day leading this profession. Uh, a reminder that uh, we will ask you to use the chat feature to interact with our panelists today and to ask any questions or give comments. Uh, we're so glad you've joined us and um, as always, you'll receive continuing education credit. And this is with all of our virtual connects, absolutely free to members. Um, we'll have some audience polls throughout, so stay tuned for those. And without further ado, let's get into the program. So again, state of the association address, um, not quite as serious as uh, the president talking to Congress, but still something we take seriously. And again, a community meeting, we want this to be interactive. We'll share what we know on the front end and we want to hear from you uh, on the back end toward the rest of the meeting as we conclude. Here are today's speakers. We have Rachel Johnson, AIA, who is president for 2021. Shiva Willoughby, our treasurer. Well Squire, the president elect. Adam Harding, past president, and I'll be moderating throughout. So leading us off, is our fearless leader, Rachel Johnson. Rachel, thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks, Wells. Mike. Hi, Shiva. Um, so you're up first, and we have Shiva to follow, and um, tell us how we're doing. Awesome. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, it's good to see you again, hopefully soon enough in person. We're really excited to see you, shake your hand, and uh, maybe I'll give a hug or two. I don't know. Um, this year's been really busy so far. Uh, I will talk a bit about advocacy efforts with AIA Colorado, so really our work with legislators. And we'll talk a little bit about what to expect uh, coming up here on um, membership, on licensure advancement, and career leadership. So Mike, if you can go to the next slide, we'll start off with advocacy. 2020 threw us a curveball. Um, our advocacy efforts, which normally consist of handshakes, pack fundraising, and talking with legislators in person, we really had to evolve with the times uh, last year and into this year as well. Um, our pack requests, of course, have kind of dwindled over the last year. So that meant savings for all of us, all members. However, uh, there's a lot going on at the Capitol and that PAC fund will really come in handy and, and serve us all very, very soon. We're entering an election year. Um, so we are asking everyone to please look for those messages regarding our PAC funds. Um, and at the same time, our government affairs committee with their fearless leader, Nick on staff um, are problem solving and thinking through how to evolve our process with legislators in this half virtual, half in-person world anymore. Um, so if you are interested in getting involved, please reach out. We, we are looking for helpers always, um, and it's just exciting working with legislators at the Capitol. We have a lot of people in our court right now, uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some special bills that, that we've seen come through and some people we've gotten to meet in the last week or so. Next slide. On that same note, whether it be local advocacy or state or even national, uh, our AIA Colorado Town Hall program was featured in uh, just last week as one of the best practices nationwide at the Architects in Action Conference. Uh, this is a pretty big uh, recognition to be receiving and we'll keep these up. The next one is September 15th. So please keep that on your radar. Go to our AIA Colorado calendar to uh, register for that one and attend. Yes, cheers, Mike, great sign. All right, next slide. We've talked about this a lot. I wrote to you all last week, but we really are better together. 
And we've seen a lot of evidence of this this year. And two special examples include our participation and renewed membership with the Building Jobs for Colorado Coalition. Uh, with this group, we were excited to participate in bill negotiations on an energy benchmarking for buildings bill. Um, and then also our A3LC participation has not dwindled, it has stayed strong. And uh, we continue to work on joint programming with this group, bringing architects, engineers, and contractors together. And this group uh, was heavily involved in legislation conversations regarding the global warming potential bill that I'll talk about later as well. But I, I really do want to emphasize the fact that when we partner with other uh, allied professionals, industries, and even outside of our construction and design industry, we can do so much more. And um, this, is, this is a little bit of evidence, though there's much more out there. So please keep that in mind. We know more people than just architects and the world is better for it. Next slide. This one was fun. Um, because of our advocacy evolution last year and, and kind of our process in how we work with legislators and how we testify for bills and um, that whole process has really shifted. Now, I was on two, um, two bill panels basically testifying on behalf of this bill. We are getting rid of DORA forms and that was a huge effort that uh, AIA and, and other, um, our, our legislator, or I'm sorry, our um, lobbyists, we, we all got teased by the legislators for having so many testimonies in line. Um, but that's, I mean, that's a good thing. Having participation from actual uh, architects and members was important. And having everybody say the same thing, that these are not of value. We are still learning that that makes my job easier. So please don't make me keep paperwork um, for years to come. So that one I believe is in motion now, but it'll take some time to get through the Capitol building, but it has been signed. Um, let's see, we talked about DORA, um, that basically continuing education requirement has been simplified and there's some verbiage that you can go into, but there's a link in the uh, president's letter from last week. So if you wanna learn more about that, feel free to follow that link. Uh, the other two bills that we did that, that felt really important this year and hopefully will have a huge impact is House Bill 1303 on global warming potential for public project materials. Um, this one was supported by AIA Colorado and it was uh, supported by other organizations as well. We worked with bill sponsors, uh, Tracy Burnett and Chris Hansen on bill language. Um, Tracy told us a story that her daughter is an architect, so she felt very close to this one, and she actually had a civil engineering background. So finding those legislators who have um, like-minded goals and similar backgrounds to ours is important as well, and that's part of that advocacy relationship that we want to build. Um, but we, we did get to attend the bill signing for this bill. Um, there's a photo right there with everybody involved. It was a big group. Um, we got to see our state architect there who is an AIA member and then Jerry Johnson, of course, is our lobbyist, um, among other, other folks who testified, uh, Paul Hutton as one. Lastly, uh, while there's other legislate, legislative items going on in the background, Nick can tell you more at some future date. Uh, the final big bill that I'd like to share is about energy performance for buildings. So this is benchmarking on energy performance. And we were in an active stakeholder in the bill's development. Um, though we didn't formally support or oppose, we, we were kind of the experts in the room. And um, we did help amend the bill. We take a really close look. Our, our government affairs committee reads these bills every week, every day. So. Um, big round of applause for those guys uh, reading what I consider to be slightly dry material, um, but important nonetheless. I, I thank the team um, and AI Colorado did get to attend the signing ceremony at the Botanic Gardens, uh, including Nick Remus, Paul Hutton again, and again, Jerry Johnson, um, all 
strong advocates on behalf of all of you and me and AIA Colorado in general. Next slide. All right, the Committee on the Environment is back. Um, I believe you know this already. This is new for AIA Colorado this year. Um, it is back and better than ever, deep, deep, deep into building a survey that will go out to all of you. And the goal of this survey is to set a baseline for where the Colorado architecture industry is on environmental stewardship practices. Um, just note that this survey is asking you to respond on behalf of your firm, um, not on behalf of you as an individual. So keep that in mind. And the goal here is to get the survey out before our practice and design conference. So please put that on your list, put that on your to-do list today to keep an eye out for that. You'll see emails come from us as well. Um, but we really wanna get that going and build on that year to year. We wanna understand where we stand as a state so that we can develop a purpose-built education series um, as soon as possibly, as soon as uh, humanly possible. All right. The final big collaborative effort that I'd like to highlight is our relationship with Noma Colorado. Uh, Noma Colorado is new as of last year. What a weird year to start their, their involvement here in Colorado. Um, but they are off and running at a very fast clip, um, keeping well ahead of all the conversations that need to happen. And uh, graciously, they have partnered with us on uh, some virtual connects. So hopefully some of you got to be a part of that one last week. And um, there will definitely be more. So our participation with NOMA is really, really important. And then um, there's a lot of overlap here. So if I were to draw a Venn diagram, you would see piece, pieces of the story and people you know in various sections of the diagram, including CU Denver. Um, so one of our board members, Mark Swackhammer, uh, is the chair at CU Denver for the architecture program, but he also serves on our AI Colorado Jedi committee um, and is heavily involved with assisting our industry um, in diversifying our pipeline. So basically the professionals who are coming into the industry, but all of this bleeds together. We have uh, Ron, Ron Abo from NOMA who is also sitting on our board. And this is a relationship that won't go away. Um, we don't want it to go away. We're very thrilled to have such experts like Noma Colorado in the state and willing to engage with us and excited to work with all of us on behalf of all of us. Um, so please keep, keep that on your radar. We will continue. I think Mike, you said August 5th is the next joint, uh, joint virtual connect or September 5th, something like that. We'll look at it. Um, it should be on the calendar as well, but but there's one coming up soon. Rachel, will you just give a really quick overview of what NOMA is for people who might not have heard of it or know what it is? Yep. Yeah, the National Organization of Minority Architects started as an organization welcoming uh, architects who perhaps were uh, not feeling represented, whether it be with I AIA or other uh, architecture professional organizations in the nation. And NOMA is, I, I can't tell you offhand how many states NOMA exists in, but it is sprawling. It is, it is a big organization and has huge impact on uh, the way we practice in our industry and programming in local areas. You'll see NOMA, um, I think in a couple weeks, they're actually sponsoring a camp for children. Um, and, and this obviously is one of the one of the goals of Jedi is to diversify our pipeline, like I said before, because you can't, you can't diversify a workforce if children don't understand or don't know or don't think that they're allowed to be in that workforce. So um, volunteering in schools and working with students of all ages is really important and NOMA is leading that charge um, nationwide, locally, and in partnership with us and UCD and a few other organizations. All right, next slide. So I'll talk about a few of these and hand it off to Shiva. Um, next slide, Mike. Our membership 
is holding steady. We um, luckily didn't see a huge drop during COVID. We are trying to support everyone throughout such a weird time, um, but you can see the breakdown of membership pretty typical for what we've seen in the past. And again, our goal here is to build this culture of belonging where you know, some members outside of the big hulking Denver membership population have felt just that outside or um, away from, and we don't, we don't like that. We don't want that. So virtually it's, it's perhaps a little more difficult, but also perhaps a little easier in some cases to engage with people across our big state and our very, <laughs> very um, geographically diverse state. So we're working on it. Um, I, of course, live in the Denver, Denver metro area, so I can't speak from experience uh, on the outskirts of that big bulk in the middle. But speaking personally, I do want us to behave and work together and act as if we are this big state. Um, we, we do better together and we can learn so much from our North members, our West members, our South members, and our Denver members equally. Um, so that's a work in progress, and we ask each of you to help us with that. Um, reach out to members across the state. There's a lot we can learn. And please reach out to us, board members, staff, if you have any um, anything that you'd like to go across to other members, or if you'd like to get in touch with uh, Shiva from Colorado Springs, or um, it's it's an open invitation to engage across our glorious Colorado state. Next slide. Again, breakdown. Uh, we have a lot of AI members, and then we've got both the incoming and the outgoing members. Um, not much new here. I think supporting the incoming uh, professional population is pretty important. So um, we're actually starting conversations here pretty soon about. Um, how to advance career leadership and train young professionals. Um, but on the emeritus side as well, we always ask that uh, fellows reach out to younger professionals and vice versa. Um, we have a, a plethora of knowledge in our membership and let's use it. We've got, we've got some smart folks. All right, I would like to thank the AEF for such huge sponsorship, um, both in name. So, so they were huge in developing this licensure advancement fund and they have always been our stable rock on these traveling scholarships that I'm sure many of you have applied for in the past. Um, they've never wavered and their flexibility on our new licensure advancement fund, which is basically a um, sponsorship for testing uh, for young professionals was astounding. They, they pulled this together and in partnership with AIA staff and our AEF board, um, they were able to quickly provide this for AIA members to get us all through COVID. So thank you to AEF and thank you to each of you who apply for these things and, and notice that these are out there. Um, I will speak for AEF, um, I believe I can safely say this, that they wanna see applications come through. They want a competitive process and um, getting to see travel scholarship applications and the review process that happens both with um, CU Boulder and CU Denver, and then also with the professionals who apply for these. It's just exciting. It's, um, the Architectural Education Foundation, Mike, is the uh, full name of AEF, just so everybody knows. I hope you're familiar with them already. Um, they've been in your life here as an architect in Colorado, whether you like it or not. And it's a really great group of people. Um, so please, thank you to them. Cheers, Mike, hold up your cheers card, please. <laughs> and then change the slide. Thank you, AEF. All right, this is my last bit for you. Um, I will be participating with one of our um, with one of our board members. So Lauren Falcon will be leading our effort in this task force. So we're looking at career leadership. 
Now this includes mentorship, uh, Christopher Kelly uh, training programs, um, everything and more, I would say. I, we're not quite sure where we're going. We know where we've been. And this is kind of just that milestone where we get to think through what we've done. Is it good? Should we improve upon it? Is there something missing? So we're starting this process actually tomorrow and we will keep you all updated on what we decide or, or what we need your help with or um, where we might be heading. It's exciting. Task forces are always fun because we get to dream big and talk to all of you about what we might want or need or like. All right, well, that is it for me. I'm gonna pass it off to Shiva, um, but I will stay on and uh, be here for questions, comments, or other. Thank you guys. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna just talk a little bit more, continuing to talk about uh, culture of belonging and what really matters and what happened this year or what were, we've been up to this year, what happened last year, um, where we are financially. Um, but before I dive into that, just kind of a little update on communication. We are getting a new website that will launch in September. I think it launches the day that the awards program happens. So all of those award winners will be featured on our fancy new website. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, this PowerPoint is kind of a sneak peek of the flavor of the website. So keep an eye out for that. And then um, we still have the newsletters going out twice a month. So that just keeps you up to date. And then we've got the president's letters and the section director letters going out. It's a little more personalized to each section and just keep you posted on what your section's up to. Um, and then we do have new quarterly um, newsletters, if you will, and it's just a way to keep you informed if you've missed one of those or something like that. Um, and as always, we would love for you to keep up to date by following us on Instagram and Facebook, um, LinkedIn, all of those places that we're all sick of, <laughs> but it's a good place to just to keep up with stuff and um, see what's happening as it unfolds. So, okay, ready for the next slide. So what really matters, um, we've taken a deep dive into our state and what, what we've found through our, um, if you recall when Mike first started, he did a, a series of, I guess we'll call them listening tours where he went around to the sections and met with them, see what they had to say. Um, we also, some of the board leadership went to a um, innovation retreat, if you will. And then we also did, or an innovation conference, I might be saying that wrong. And then we also, some of the leadership had a retreat with some other chapters. So with all of that combined, what we've really found um, matters to us here in Colorado is collegiality, recognition, leadership, and influence. Um, so although we might've heard, you know, when Mike came on those listening tours, we don't have an awards ceremony anymore. We wanna have awards ceremony. Um, what we've really figured out is that it's not that each section wants the workload of putting on an award ceremony, that what they really want is recognition for the good work that they're doing all over the state. So um, having this kind of framework in mind is really helping to inform us, you know, what are the things that we need to make sure that we're hitting as we move forward with our planning, what kind of programs, um, even having these things in mind as we when we were previously looking at our new mission and vision and things like that. So um, we want you to know that we heard you and we're keeping that at the forefront of our mind while we're making these decisions. Um, so a year of action. So this year we're really like putting our money where our mouth is and we've been really busy. Um, I wouldn't say we've been playing catch up because I think we've really been kicking butt, but last year was pretty crazy. Like Rachel said, um, but we've, like a couple of things to note that we've done this year. We've literally reviewed every contract that we've had and just made sure that it's suiting us um, in the best possible way. We've um, switched banks. We have, um, and Wells will talk about this a little bit later, but we're looking, uh, the office will be moving, the AIA office will be moving to a location that better suits our, you know, aligns with our values and our goals. Um, what else huge that we do that I'm missing? have to cheat and look at my notes. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, 
we, oh, another huge one that I'll talk about in uh, a minute is we've switched our investment advisor. So we really are, um, even though it might seem like things are moving a little slowly because you're not seeing all these huge in-person events or things right away, we've really been working hard as a board with all these subcommittees, um, reviewing investment proposals and going on office tours to find the next best location, all of those things. Um, we've been working really hard for you as a board to make sure that we do what we say we're gonna do. Okay, next. Um, and so as you know, we have the local advisory councils and this has sort of been an ever evolving um, group of people, if you will. So we have um, directors from every section who sit on the board and those are gonna be your conduit from your local area to the board. Um, and that should go both ways, right? They're both informing you all of what's going on at the board level and you're telling them of any concerns or questions or things you're excited about. Um, so here, in case you didn't know, here's a breakdown of um, who the section directors are and then who's part of those advisory councils. And those are gonna be the people who are generally um, just keeping on top of what's happening at the local level, helping to set up those local events like the um, happy hours or the building tours or things like that. Um, okay, next. Um, so last year was really a year of reaction, right? We were just reacting as fast as we could to what was happening. And to be honest, it put a lot of stress on our business model, right? Our business model AIA is focused on in-person networking, in-person events, we like to be around each other. We don't like to be around other people, but we like to be around other architects. <laughs> um, and so we really were just pivoting as fast as we could to, okay, how do we make this business model work now? And I think um, I think that AIA did a really great job of, of switching things to virtual and just trying to even in the midst of not being able to meet face-to-face, -face, still working hard to try to create a culture of belonging. And some of the, you know, kind of silver lining of that is that everything had to go virtual, which maybe sucked, but also it kind of gave everyone this universal access to all the things that were going on. And now, um, as Rachel was talking about those outlying chapters, which I happen to be part of, um, I felt like events were a lot more accessible to me because now I'm not gonna be the only one on the phone or on a video and everyone else is in person. Everyone was on equal ground doing this, these events virtually. So although it was a bummer not to be able to meet up with people, I think that was a huge thing that um, actually did really contribute to this culture of belonging that we're trying to foster. Okay, next. Um, so breaking even and realigning our investments. So just to be clear, we're, um, AIA is in really good financial standings. We have great reserves right now. And last year, despite all of the craziness, we broke even. So we did take a hit on um, having to cancel Keystone, having that event space, but we got the PPP loan. So that helped us really to break even and, and our membership held pretty strong. So that's awesome. Um, and now that we're getting back to, you know, we're, or rather I should say, we're not just trying to go back to business as usual. We're taking this as an opportunity to redefine the way that we do business. And that's sort of the reason why we've, not sort of, that is the reason why we've um, taken a step back and we're looking at every single one of our contracts. We're looking at, hey, does this huge expensive lease make sense? Um, and same thing with realigning our best investments. So earlier this year, we put out an RFP uh, for a new investment advisor. And we reviewed those. We had a subcommittee review those. And what we really wanted was an investment advisor who would help us um, design a portfolio that's gonna both align with our values and our mission and, and help us build um, a portfolio that's both profit-driven and um, purpose driven, right? So we don't wanna just invest in whatever thing is the safest to invest if they're not a just corporation or they're not environmentally responsible. Like maybe it doesn't make the most sense for us to invest in, in an oil company, even if it's safe. So um, we're really excited about our new um, investment advisor. So now we've rolled everything together. So we, we both do banking and are investing with AMG. 
now. And we're all pretty excited about that. And they're excited to have someone who really cares about what they're investing in. So I think it should be a good partnership. Um, I get nervous and I talk really fast. So if I forgot something that was important that I should mention, please chime in guys. Shiva, Otherwise, can I add one, one thing that I did forget and it's on a financial note as well. <laughs> uh, we, regarding membership and how last year went and what you'll see in the future, uh, our membership has stayed strong, um, but I do want to remind you all that as you see your AIA dues renewal uh, notices come in in the, in the fall, like late fall, please keep in mind we do have an installment program. We want to keep you as a member and we want to be of value to you. So please keep us updated on how we're doing, what you need, but keep in mind that we are flexible as you find ways to pay your dues. So um, we do have payment plans and um, we, we want to talk before you leave us. If you choose to leave us, we wanna find out how we can do better first. Um, so on that financial perspective, we are devoted to uh, serving all of you and making sure we understand what the latest and greatest need for our members is. Um, and a very small part of that is helping you stay solvent as well as ourselves. I think we had the highest number of people take advantage of that installment payment plan uh, over the past year, which is understandable. And we had um, no surprise here. We're hearing about people who are moving during the pandemic. So we had a lot of transfers in of new members from other states. So we did lose some folks um, and, and that happens every year, right? But it was supplemented by the fact that we could um, help people make those payments on more flexible terms and we're getting more people moving into the state all the time. Okay, Adam, you're next on the list. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Good to see everyone today. All right, let's talk about leadership opportunities, shall we? Each and every one of you is a leader in my eyes. So we've got some big opportunities to show the world what we can do in Colorado. So let's talk about the Western Mountain region. Guess what? It's going to be no more. We are going to be a singular state, which is great. That will allow us to have the opportunities to be best in class in the nation. What that means is that we're going to have a lot of opportunities to go st straight to the national level with Young Architect Forum, the National Associates Committee, the College of Fellows, and the Small Firm Exchange. So those calls for nominations will be coming out to all of you uh this year and we hope that you all step up and take advantage of that um additionally we Hold have our one one yeah. thing adam sorry um this, this is not to say we are leaving our western mountain partners in the dust um True. this this is kind of a key point to to note we are partnering with these guys these guys know what we're about in this very dry climate that we live in um, so this is opening opportunity to partner in many different ways without the prescription of the Western Mountain Region format. And as Adam says, many more opportunities in addition to that. Exactly. Yes. I'm excited about it. In the past, we've had to wait our turn to take a seat at the national level, but now we've got a bunch of opportunities for all of us to step up and show the world what we can do. Additionally, we have our board and our committees and our local councils. Um, and the strategic council, um, I should say, at the national level. So all of these uh, positions will be opening up and, you know, step up, be a leader, you know, start small, start big, just start somewhere. It's that first step that gets you moving in the right direction. So I urge each and every one of you to talk to your colleagues, talk to your friends and urge them to get involved as well. So do your part and let's all be leaders in this industry that we love so much. Um, and lastly, you know, it's an invitation. It's never an obligation. You know, do it because you want to do it. And I guarantee you'll get a lot out of it. Um, I know that I have over the past 10 years. So be, do what you think is best for you. Um, we invite you to join us and be a part of what we're doing. And uh, I hope to see you guys on boards and committees and what have you in the future. So um hold on i gotta sneeze 
<clears throat> lastly, you know, we could go as if we could only go as far as as we had the capacity to do so. So everyone step up and be the leader that you are. Let's show the world what we could do. Thank you. I'll pass it off to Wells. Wells, good luck. I don't know how you're going to beat this. Yeah, I'm not even going to try, Adam, but thank you for the <laughs> levity. That was good. Uh, and it, it, it speaks to the fun that we've been having as a board. And when we're having fun, we're doing good work. And so it's been an honor to be a part of this group and have the opportunity to talk today a little bit about some of the organizational transformation that the year 2020 and our uh, interest in, you know, following up on our imperatives and mission and values that we sharpened in 2019 has played out. And as Shiva said, really 2020 was a year of reaction, but it, we, it also emerged as a year of great opportunity. And we've, we hope that we've leveraged that opportunity to the greatest advantage. So uh, next slide, please, Mike. So in terms of our programming, um, you know, again, we'll talk about inclusivity here, but the shift to virtual platforms for our programming emerged as a great success. We had incredible participation, but fundamentally too, we had incredible programming. We, we had 58 individual programs. Uh, we offered 93 and a half continuing education credits of which 47 were HSW credits. Um, you know, 3,500 plus credits reported with over 2,000 uh, of those qualifying for HSW. So uh, we looked at this and we loved the reach and how this almost shrunk our state in terms of some of the ability for our members to engage in our programming. So uh, we're, we're informing uh, ourselves from this experience, looking forward how we can maintain a similar opportunity for broader engagement of our membership. And uh, I really just want to give credit to those who volunteered and supported and pulled together so much, or came together to provide so much great programming last year. Um, really just uh, industry related information, but also a lot of COVID information. So uh, that's what we're here to do. We're here to come together as colleagues and strengthen each other by lifting each other up. And I thought the programming was outstanding and the reach was wonderful. Uh, next slide. Um, again, all inclusive, this, this virtual platform had the effect of, of increasing participation, as I said, uh, but also really increasing inclus inclusivity uh, we offered as much program as, as we could last year, free of charge to our members, uh, which was great. So um, again, we're just trying to uh, put forth really valuable content. Again, thanking our volunteers and, and those members who have contributed to that content uh, for the betterment of all, but to reach a broader audience of members, frankly, through our membership or, or through our programming. Uh, next slide, Mike. Uh, you know, that's kind of the theme for, for my opportunity to talk today is just how, again, we pivoted in, in an uncertain year where we were all sort of figuring it out together as we moved through. Um, and, and we had an incredibly successful design and honor awards last year. And so credit goes to the planning committee um, and those uh, who helped bring that to reality and, and the model that emerged in utilizing drive-in movie theaters uh, was so clever and so fun and, and it really garnered a lot of positive reaction. So I know the committee's working hard to plan this year's event. And I, I know too that they're taking cues from last year to uh, take what we can from, from that discovery and, and continue to try and prove um, you know, how we deliver uh, these design and honor awards. So stay tuned for that. Next slide, Mike. Thank you. Similarly, the Practice and Design Conference. Uh, again, we had great programming last year. Uh, some, so much positive feedback really from the membership uh, into how uh, the structure was put together for this. Again, I, I just, I, I'm being redundant. I wanna say uh, the planning committee did a great job shifting and dealing with uncertainties to deliver something that I hope all of us can be proud of. Um, really, you know, featuring great national speakers, uh, great national content, all with a focus, really, that relates back to, you know, just and inclusivity, uh, something that we're focused heavily on as a board and as an organization through JEDI and other initiatives. Next slide, Mike. Well, with all that said, I think we're all very excited to get back to in-person events. And so, um, you know, there's been some discussion about this. We like to, you know, we like to shake hands. We like to engage and and have the opportunities to, uh, you know, to, to catch up and to talk. So we're looking forward to um, hopefully uh, improving trends continuing so that we can get together um, 
you know, for future events and that we can see more of our members in person. So next slide. Okay, so the big one on my list is the AIA move, our office move. Um, let's see, so really early this year, uh, AIA Colorado and the board appointed a task force of which I chaired of board members, select board members to investigate opportunities for uh, the new location for AIA Colorado. And when I say new location, I, would, I should say that one of the options, one of the considerations was perhaps uh, because of COVID influence, maybe we might stay where we are and negotiate a better lease, but really there wasn't anything that was off the table. We're coming out of a 10 year lease uh, which expires 1231 of this year. Uh, and what became clear, especially through the year of COVID, is that we were underutilizing our space. In terms of staffing, we have limited staff actually working in the office. Um, you know, we're doing more with less. Uh, the, the interest of, of renewing a lease in our current location wasn't that appealing. There, there's a number of significant cost implications uh, just very high rents, long lease durations, uh, uh, moving cam rates. So uh, the task force, we, we wanted to look, we, we established some criteria uh, to act as a lens by which we looked through to evaluate options and alternatives to bring forward to the board for prospective considerations for, for a new location. And uh, that criteria included location, proximity to members, um, you know, uh, just obviously the size of space, uh, what it would take to build it out, um, and, and more, maybe most importantly, how the space could help staff and, and help AI Colorado better serve its, its community of members. So through this process, the task force has recommended to the board of directors that we engage in a lease at the Alliance Center. And the Alliance Center uh, on Wincoop in downtown Denver, um, for those who may not be familiar with the building, um, it, it, it's a communal workspace building that uh, is really a unique model. Uh, it's a lead platinum building, uh, well building certified. Uh, they walk the walk. It's made up mostly in terms of tenants of nonprofit organizations. Uh, ULI is in the building, um, a, a lot of great like-minded groups that do good things for our state. Uh, the, the location couldn't be better uh, with proximity to the university, to a high concentration of our front range uh, member firms, et cetera. Um, and the options they provided were, were very flexible and adaptable. And that was appealing to us as well. Again, we, you know, we, we have limited in-person staff at the moment and for the foreseeable future. Uh, it just seemed overkill to utilize the expansive space of our current space. So we will be, we are recommending to the board that we proceed to engage in, in a lease with the Alliance Center through 2022 uh, for a junior suite space, which will, uh, I think uh, it, it's got, it's, it's a great space. It's got good exposure. It's got good energy. The building has great energy. Again, uh, I think there's a lot of excitement with this. Uh, we worked closely, obviously, with AIA staff uh, through this process as in, in participation with the task force. Um, to give you some idea, we, we feel that, um, you know, obviously we have good flexibility in this building. They offer individual offices and workstations, uh, but we elected to go with the junior suite to have a little bit of surplus of space because we are downsizing from a larger space. Um, but, uh, but again, this will give us the opportunity to be centralized and reduce our month-to-month -month cost by about four-fifths in terms of rent. So uh, what that's going to do is allow us to free up a lot more resources, continue to strengthen our fiscal position uh, to better serve our members and uh, member community moving forward. Um, next slide, Mike. And again, I, I sort of surmised everything. It all comes down to this, new possibilities. You know, how do we do more with less. How do we deliver great programming, better programming than we've done before? How do we better empower our committees, um, knowledge communities to, to continue to do their great work individually on all of our behalf? Um, obviously, we, we do encourage you all to get engaged, um, as Adam just expressed. Um, but 
you know, really in terms of new possibilities, what we've learned from a year of COVID and, and turning negatives into positives and learning from the opportunities it presented uh, is very much in the spirit of the new office move, giving us flexibility, right size, uh, good community and where we'll be, uh, all to better serve the membership. Um, it really speaks to the building move uh, as an example of what we've been trying to do this year, just to improve how we're doing our work for AI Colorado and for our membership. Thank you. Okay, thanks Wells and everybody uh, for all those great contributions and summaries of what we've been doing uh, on behalf of you and the members. So now's the point in the program where we're doing great on time um, and everybody talk fast. So um, if, you're, if you're wondering, um, what's in that water that you just drank from the fire hose. Now's a great time to ask a question um, and get a little bit more detail. So um, you can use the chat if you'd like for that. Um, okay, Chris asked, did I understand correctly that the new lease is through the end of 2022? Uh, Wells, you want to take that one? Sure, that's the plan. I don't believe the lease is executed yet. We will, um, you know, the task force is recommending to the board that we we move forward with the lease and the lease has been reviewed by council. Um, but yes, Chris, that is correct. Um, you know, there, there's flexibility in terms and, you know, even going with approximately a 14 month lease because, uh, you know, we, we we need to transition, right? So, and and they've actually held the space for us, which is important that that was most desirable, just looking at the different options that they had available. Again, we, we got really, I think one of the best spaces in the entire building. So it's been vacant for, you know, the last five months, they've held it for us until September 1. So, Again, we'll engage with the lease there uh, as of September 1, but we wanted to balance it so that it would, uh, lease renewals would align sort of with our, our calendar year. So we wanted to get it trued up to a January lease renewal. So yes, the, the new lease at the Alliance Center will run through 2022. Um, and of course, we've done our due diligence to look at their trends in terms of how lease rates adjust and everything else. And frankly, it's been very, very consistent. Uh, we've had conversations there, so we don't feel as though it's a risk financially, especially considering the significant savings. I mean, it's it's unbelievable savings just in terms of, of rent outlay that that will benefit our organization. Um, so again, it seemed it seemed prudent to engage in a lease through the end of 2022. So long way of answering yes, that is the term of the new lease we're recommending to the board. And it if, if we had a raw space that we were doing a significant build out for, it'd be crazy to sign a, such a short term lease, but this is turnkey. Uh, they had a major interior renovation um, just a couple years ago, uh, well done by Gensler. Um, and they have not increased their rate for tenants, uh, I think, but once in the last four or five years. And the model that they have is get you in along with a lot of other like minded partners and tenants who are built around, the Alliance Center really wants to focus on environmental stewardship, nonprofits and associations who are in that space. And uh, so we're gonna come in as one of those built environment groups that aligns with that value. Um, other groups are there or have been there like USGBC and ULI, and it's meant for growth. So like other the, these other uh, shared space offices, you keep moving to what suits you best. So as we grow, as we get more people coming into the office on a regular basis, we can adapt and grow within the space. So um, this is probably a long-term move, but we don't have to make a long-term commitment. So we've got um, a question from Jason, who's curious if WMR is ceasing to exist or if it is AI Colorado that is leaving WMR. Great question. Um, I know. Rachel and Wells were both delegates at the annual business meeting that took that vote. So um, please share some of the background on, on what is actually happening logistically. Sure, sure. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? I changed my headphone up. Um, regions in general for the nation for AI National are no more. So it's, it has nothing to do with Western Mountain region, it is regions in general. And the story behind that is um, just like Adam said, representation was a little uneven 
there are regions that are just states. New York, for for one, is is huge. <laughs> there are so many people in New York, um, and Western Mountain region was pretty dispersed. So trying to even out representation and trying to build an efficient uh, system. There, there was a lot of homework over the last year and a half that was done by a specific regions committee at the national level. Um, but no, it, it is not an AI Colorado decision. It is not a, a Western Mountain Region decision. Now, Wells and I and the board on behalf of members did vote on this. And so we, we did get to have a say, um, but the original intent of this shift originated at the national level on regions generally. It's really, it, it's, it was made a bigger deal than it actually is in the sense that regions were only said in the bylaws one time and it was associated with populating the strategic council. Um, so they essentially repealed that provision in the bylaws. Now that doesn't mean the regions will just fold up shop and go away, it means it's no longer defined by national. So it can be defined um, any way we want in the future. There's even talk of um, expanding a region, a voluntary region to include other states um, such as Montana and Idaho and still talk about issues that are important to the mountain states. Uh, but we, don't, we no longer have to pay dues um, to the region and that was significant. Um, we no longer have to pay for an executive board of the regions, which again, we're not required by the AI bylaws, but it's just something that evolved over time uh, to attend a lot of events, um, which was a pretty big outlay, almost as much as what the dues cost. Um, and it's up to us what we do now. And, then, and I think the biggest thing is what Adam talked about. Instead of saying there's six places you can serve at the national level and you have to divide it among your six states, mm -hmm every state has a seat at every one of those tables. Uh, so that's gonna let our members be right in the thick of things. And I'll say Colorado being the biggest chapter in our region, in our Western Mountain region, um, has always served a big role in inviting people to the conference. We, we have seen out of state participants in the Christopher Kelly Leadership Development Program. So my hope is that that doesn't go away. We are not leaving our region. We still are neighbors and we still are serving a similar um, architecture community, whether it be in Utah or Nevada or uh, Arizona or Colorado. So that should never go away. Um, and, and I think that was the concern for some smaller chapters is how do we get the support from these big chapters to continue operating and have a seat at the table um, but but now everyone does have a seat at the table and AI Colorado will not leave our smaller local chapter neighbors behind. Um, so so we get to build those opportunities and continue inviting participation and attending as well other chapter events. There's and, a uh, oh. Yeah, Jason, to follow up uh, regarding the national board, the national board is elected position, um, but we will have a seat on the strategic council as far as I understand. Is that right, Mike? That's right. I was going to say yes with an asterisk. Right. Uh, Bill Turner is the national secretary. Um, so he's an officer and sits on the national board. But there hasn't been geographic representation on the board for a number of years now. Um, so anyone can run for those positions on the board uh, at the national convention, uh, appeal to the delegates with their platform and get a vote. Um, and it's not based on where you're from. We got a question from JP um, asking, what is the ratio percentage for future in-person and virtual programs slash events? Um, the short answer there is we don't know. It's gonna be mostly based on the kind of event. Um, it, to, to suggest that everything's all settled and the future is predetermined, it would be pretty bold to, to say that. Um, so we're gonna adapt as we go along. We've always followed, the, the, the board has been really diligent about following public health recommendations. We're not doctors, we're not lawyers. There's no reason for us to make up policies um, that are different from what everybody else who are experts are saying. So we, we may have to adapt and change our plans as situations change, but we do think that the business of the organization and in inviting members into conversations about what the future of the organization is as an enterprise 
will most likely continue to be virtual. Uh, because we are a statewide organization, because we have members from all parts of the state, we want to give them as much uh, equal access as possible. So you'll, you'll see committee meetings continue to take place that way, um, annual business meetings, uh, even board uh, meetings for the most part continue in that format. What we're not sure the ratio is going to be in the future is the signature events like awards, uh, practice and design conference, uh, member milestones and networking events. Um, it's hard to do networking virtually. I mean, people have tried it and it doesn't work. Um, but yet that's a signature benefit of being part of this community, right? Is being able to gather together and see your friends and colleagues in real life. So um, we want to bring those back and we're starting to do that now this month. Um, and we're going to keep doing it on the smaller events as much as possible. And then awards um, will be an in-person event and that'll be a large gathering. So um, our intention right now is to bring conference back in 2022 and bring everything that we can back um, where access isn't an issue for people um, to an in-person status in 2022. Um, crossing our fingers and for the best. Any other thoughts on that? Um, I know we, it's been a conversation uh, at least briefly and sometimes longer than that at every board meeting. Yeah, it's hard to ignore the opportunities that everyone having to be virtual afforded us. Um, and it's hard to miss the face-to-face, -face, the in-person conference up in the mountains. So we are, we are constantly reflecting on both of those notes. It's a question I get more than anything else when I travel um, and see people in firms or deliver awards from last year because we couldn't do it in person. Is, uh, is the conference going to be in person this year? Um, so there is definitely a desire for that. And there is also the opposite effect of people being sick of being on Zoom. So for those of you who made it today, extra credit for you. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for making time out of your day in something that's probably not your most favorite thing to do. Any other questions and comments? We have Kaylin who's joined us. Uh, I won't ask her to turn on her camera, but... Um, oh, there Sorry. she is. <laughs> Kaylin's AI Colorado secretary um, and has a project deadline that uh, looks like you're having a chance to finally come up for air and have something to eat. Um, yes. <laughs> late, but this is now your full officer team for 2021. Okay, well, we don't have to um, wait for questions that aren't there or comments that aren't there. We, we really hope that you enjoyed getting a little peek behind the curtain at what's going on uh, with your leadership. Um, let's just go around the horn real quick for any closing thoughts. Um, let's start, uh, let's go in the same order of presentation. Um, Rachel, Shiva, Adam, Wells, and last word for Kaylin. Sure. Uh, thank you all for joining today. Thank you, panelists, board members. Uh, I just want to <laughs> be very gracious and, and clear that we're fortunate to have such, such a great membership group at AI Colorado. We are grateful to all of you. Um, your support continues to contribute to advancing our efforts in advocacy, um, Jedi. There, there's so much that we've been able to do with your help and alongside all of you. So thank you to all of you. Um, please stay in touch. Please look at these upcoming events, uh, especially the in-person ones. We get to say hello and uh, we will talk to you soon. Thank you all. Yeah, I would just say thanks also. Um, and thanks for rolling with the punches with us as we reacted to everything. Um, and just a shout out and thanks to the board. It's a really fun board and we do have a lot of fun, but we get a lot done. Um, I really enjoyed working with these people. <laughs> Maybe not Adam, just kidding. Especially Adam, especially Adam. <laughs> um, anyways, I, I am just really excited that we're 
we're not afraid to look at any, you know, we're re-examining the whole organization from top to bottom and just seeing how we can really truly um, make everything align with our mission and our vision and our, our values. Um, so that's, that's a big deal. And that's really all I would say. All right. Well, I would say ditto that Shiva. I've enjoyed working with all of you, but to everyone out there, please get involved. There's great opportunities coming up and I think we could keep doing great things together as long as we stay passionate and we persevere and we work together in alignment uh, to achieve some great things for our state and for all of you. So step up, become the leader you are and get involved. Thanks. Not much to add to that. That's, that's well put uh, to those who preceded me. Thank you all who were able to attend today. We, we really appreciate that. We love the opportunity to have the opportunity to connect with our members, even if virtually and in a presentation format. We are looking forward to seeing you in person. I know, uh, I know we all are. And then just lastly, um, I, I'm just honored and privileged to have the opportunity to work with this group on this board uh, for, you know, in stewardship of our organization here in the, in the state of Colorado. So thank you. Um, we're doing, we're working hard to do the right things for this organization and look forward to continuing that into the future. Echo, I'll, I'll first apologize for joining late and I think I didn't mute myself so you may have heard me eat crackers. Uh, <laughs> apologies. Uh, but Echo, what, um, what everyone else has, has already said, I think we really were excited about the groundwork um, we laid last year and really starting to look into how we roll that uh, into into the works this year. And I think, yeah, everyone's anxious and excited about some of the in-person events we've got um, started and kind of a, uh, scheduled for the, the next couple of our next couple of months. And I think everyone's just really excited to keep, um, keep going. And yeah, I'll echo again, I think get involved. Um, feel free to pop into a, you know, a meeting and see what, see what the different committees are about and kind of see where you may want to, to plug in. Well, well said, everybody, um, and thank you all of your you for joining us as attendees. Um, just some quick program notes so you know what to look forward to. Uh, the awards are coming up in mid-September, um, so watch out for that. The juries have met, and there are 20 really amazing projects and people to be recognized. Um, so you'll see that coming up uh, in September. Conferences on, in October, uh, call for nominations and the annual member meeting in November, and then we'll close out the year with volunteer celebrations and member milestones in December. So uh, we hope to see you soon and take care, uh, whether virtually or in person. I hope to extend a cheers to every one of you. Take care, everybody. See you next time. <laughs>